بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله بدأ المؤلف رحمه الله تعالى بباب أو كتاب المواريث الإرث نعم الميراث نعم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم After this the author he went on to the next section and that is the chapter of مواريث أي the laws of inheritance ماذا نصنع إذا مات إنسان If a person dies how do we react أول شيء نجهز ونكفن بالمعروف بالمتعارف عليه ما ندفع مال زائد ولا نبخل بالمال وسط يعني مثلا تجهيز يقول عندنا هنا مثلا ب 100 مثلا لكن في ناس يجهزوا ب 1000 يركبوا السياره هذا الكدلك الطويله ولا الفورد الكبيره وكذا لا ولا نبخل الوسط نعم so the first obligation upon us with regards to the deceased is that we have to prepare his burial and his shrouding and his transport to the graveyard. However, the cost of this has to be moderate according to your setting which you are in. So neither do we go to the extreme of being extravagant and neither should we be stingy. So for example, if there is uh, the, the average price or the average cost of preparing for the burial is 100 pounds, and then there's another company which is offering a more extravagant service for a thousand pounds and the body is going to be carried or transported in a Cadillac or a Ford. This is not permitted. So after we have paid off the costs for the burial and the funeral procession for the deceased, then the next step is that we have to pay off the debts of the deceased. Min malihi. We're talking now about the inheritance or the wealth which the deceased person has left behind. What do we have to do? From his wealth, the first thing which has to pay, be paid off are the funeral costs. The second thing that has to be paid off from his money or his wealth are the debts which he owes to people. And also, some of the debts which he obligated upon himself, which were a kafara or an expiation which he owed. These have to also be paid from his wealth. And then after this, if the deceased had left behind a wasiya, a bequest, then that bequest has to be executed and that wealth has to be deducted from his inheritance. وَلِغَيْرِ الْوَارِثِ لَا لِلْوَارِثِ نعم However, the deceased person cannot leave behind a wasiya, a bequest, except that it has to be a third or less than a third. Meaning, he is not allowed to bequest more than a third of his wealth. It can only be a third or less than a third. And secondly, he is not allowed to leave behind a wasiya for an heir who inherits from his wealth. لو أوصى بدفن في المسجد لا ننفذ الوصية. If the deceased had requested in his will for him to be buried inside the masjid, the will is not executed. إذا أوصى بأي محرم لا ننفذه. If he had requested in his will for anything which was haram, it cannot be executed. تمام. ثم بعد هذا نقسم الإرث. And then after this, after paying off these things. Then we distribute the inheritance. في الغالب عندنا أنه إذا ترك منزل مثلا يترك المنزل للزوجة وأصغر الأولاد وهذا أكبر خطأ لا بد نقسم التركة كما قسم الله سبحانه وتعالى وأكثر المشاكل بين العوائل بسبب الإرث نعم. And nowadays it's prevalent the practice which is prevalent that if the deceased leaves behind a house. He leaves it behind for his wife and his youngest child. And this is something which is not permitted. Rather, we have to distribute the inheritance according to the laws which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set. And the majority of problems nowadays between family members is because of inheritance. Now, if the real thing is that if a person is a person, we take his money and we take the land, then we take the land and we take the land. هذا لا بد من المبادرة بهذه الأشياء. نعم على هذا الترتيب. نعم. So as we mentioned, if a person passes away and leaves behind and leaves behind wealth, 
then these four steps in this sequence have the wealth has to be deducted firstly we deduct from his wealth the amount which is required for his funeral procession the burial the transport and everything which is associated from it secondly we have to pay off his debts and these are his debts towards other people and also his debts with Allah like the Sheikh mentioned kafara and expiations and nadur and so on and so forth and then the third step is if he left behind a wasiyah a bequest which does not contain haram this has to also be executed and then after this is the fourth step and that is for the wealth to be distributed according to the laws of inheritance now بماذا أوصي أوصي بماذا إذا تعلم أن العائلة عندك بعد موتك سيصنع شيئا من البدع وغيره لا بد تكتب وصية ولا بد تنبههم تقول أنا بريء من كل من يجتمع بعد موتي يصنع البدع يصنع كذا يصنع كذا نعم if you want to write your will and you want to leave behind a wasiyah, a bequest, then what, you sh what should you write in your wasiyah? First of all, if you know that when you pass away, your family members who remain, that they are going to be carrying out bid'ah innovations after you have passed away, then you should write this down in your wasiyah. And you tell them and you advise them not to partake in these bid'ah or these innovations and this is how things have to be done and that you are free from any type of bid'ah نعم بعد هذا ذكر المؤلف رحم الله تعالى أن الإنسان إذا باع واشترى وحصل له شيء من الإرث يريد يتزوج الآن نعم then after this the author went on to the next chapter and that is that after a person has uh, bought and sold and traded and then he wants to get married the rulings of nikah نعم ما شاء الله الآن شوف تعدل الجلوس والجوالات تركت أعوذ بالله من الشيطان now look as soon as marriage is mentioned everybody's sitting upright nobody's looking at their phones anymore هذا يقول ليت الدورة كلها كانت النكاح and he said if only the whole دورة was regarding نكاح يأتيك الآن الطلاق don't worry after نكاح there will be divorce تمام يا أخوانا طالب العلم انتبه إلى هذا الكلام هذا ليس كلامي كلام العلماء طالب العلم ماذا يصنع قال جنبوا مجالسنا شهوة الفرج وشهوة الفم هذه المجالس السلفية جنبوا مجالسنا شهوة الفرج وشهوة الفم يعني لا يمكن أن تكون مجالس على السنة فيها كلام على النساء وعلى كذا أو كلام على الطعام وعلى الدنيا وعلى الهواتف نعم عيب على طلاب العلم أن تكون مجالسهم فيها شيء من هذا لأن لو دخل واحد قال هذا مجالسكم أنتم السنة تتكلم في النساء وكذا نعم A student of knowledge or students of knowledge طلاب العلم how should they behave if we are students of knowledge and we are people of the sunnah then our gatherings should be as such and the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he said keep our gatherings la qawl ulama jannibu majalisana naam and kwais uh, nafham qalil bas alhamdulillah naam and the ulama and this isn't my speech but this is the statement of the ulama they say that our gatherings should be free from the mention of that which stirs the desires of the private parts and also يعني, for example the mention of women and uh, talking too much about dunya and food and mobiles and things like this these our gatherings should not be gatherings which are based upon this because our gatherings are the gatherings of the sunnah and the gatherings of a salafiya and if a person entered into the masjid and he saw and he listened from your gathering and all you're talking about is women and desires He'll say, this is Salafiyya, this is the Sunnah. Majlis Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah kanat dakhil. Iza dakhil Majlis Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah wa rahmullah, tadakkar al-Akhira. Iza dakhil ila al-Majlis, ya tadakkar al-Akhira. Yani la yujud fi al-Dars shay'u dakkirak bil-Dunya. Naam. 
And the Sheikh mentioned that the gatherings of Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, if a person was to enter upon the gathering, straight away would remind them of the Akhirah. Because these were the gatherings of ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, always regarding the Akhirah. There was no mention of the dunya in his lessons and his gatherings. لم يسمع قط في مجلس من مجالس شيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية رحم الله غيبة أو نميمة. And it was never heard from the gatherings of ابن تيمية رحم الله slandering or backbiting. تستطيع تزو تتزوج توقع الله تزوج. So if a person is able to marry, then he should depend upon Allah and he should marry. ما لا تستطيع. But if a person is unable to marry, ماذا تصنع? How should he behave? تصوم. He should fast. هذا الذي أرشد إليه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم متكلم. And this was the guidance of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that a person fasts if he's unable to get married. Not that he continues. He talks about marriage. تقلل من الطعام من الشراب. And also that a person reduces the amount of food and drink. He consumes. يعني نصف وجبة في اليوم ممكن. Meaning half a meal in a day. نعم. أنا تقل كلم هذا الشرع. نعم. الثالث هذا الهاتف تتركه اللي ليس متزوج يأخذ الجوال القديم ذاك أبو كشاف الغبي. نعم. ليس غبي هو هذا بعد عن الفتن. نعم. أو يأخذ تليفون بدون إنترنت. نعم، إنترنت فقط إذا ذهب إلى المسجد ممكن. نعم. المسجد كيف إنترنت؟ نعم. نعم. And this is the guidance of the Sharia in terms of fasting and also in terms of reducing your food and drink so it doesn't stir or strengthen your desire and your and your emotions. And then another piece of advice is that for those brothers who are not married, that abstain from your phones or have a phone which doesn't have these features. لا. برامج ممكن عندك هذا الجهاز لكن إلغي بعض البرامج التي تفتنك أو أنت تعرف أنك ضعيف وعندك بعض البرامج فيها ما فيها من طمات احذف البرنامج ليس بلوك حذف نعم وارتاح لا تدخل فيه نعم واتس أب مثلا تضع اللي ممكن يرسل لك بعض الأشياء ضعوا حظر لكن في عندنا بعض البرامج أنت تعرف فيها طامات نعم and also even if you do possess such a phone then those programs and those apps which you know are going to cause you problems you should delete them not merely block them but delete them so maybe on WhatsApp for example if you know that there's a particular individual and he sends you certain messages which are not good, you can block that person. But you know that there are other apps which bring much afflictions and calamities and fitna for a person. You delete them from your phone. And you should, and you should be completely confident that whoever leaves something for the sake of Allah, Allah will give him that which is better than it. And also that a person makes dua. اللهم اكفني بحلالك عن حرامك واغنني بفضلك عمن سواك يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك استغيث واصلح لي شأني كله ولا تكلني إلى نفسي طرفة عين أبدا وإلا تصرف عني كيدهن أصب إليهن وأكم من الجهلين قال رب السجن أحب إلي مما يدعونني إليه قدم السجن يسجن وهو نبي من الأنبياء والرسل عليهم الصلاة والسلام حتى يبتعد عن الفتنة. نعم. And also a person makes dua and you say, Oh Allah, suffice me from that which you have made halal away from that which you have made haram. And Oh Allah, suffice Oh Allah, make my dependence and reliance upon you and do not leave me to my own self even for the blinking of an eye. And look at the example of Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam. And when he feared the plot of the women and how he sought refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so much so he said, Oh my Lord, prison is more preferred to me than that which they call to. And this was Nabiullah Yusuf alayhi salam. And he preferred to be imprisoned than to be taken by the plots and the seductions of those women. Ibqa wahdak la... هذا ما يبقى وحده أبدا ولا ينام وحده 
ولا يطيل الدخول في الحمام نعم and also a person who is not married لا يبقى وحده أبدا شيطان نعم a person who is not married he should not isolate himself from the rest of the people because this is one of the plots of a shaitan isolating yourself and being alone and spending a lot of the a lot of time in the hammam these are from the plots of a shaitan and even opening your laptop or entering onto the sites in a place in which you are isolated from the people and also stay away from the town centers and the marketplaces كيف لا يذهب إلى السوق؟ يستطيع الآن عبر إنترنت يدخل ويشتري. صحيح. لماذا يذهب إلى السوق يتسوق؟ نعم. And also staying away from these malls and supermarkets. لا يذهب إلى أماكن الفتن. Meaning a person should not go to those places where there is fitna. يغض البصر. And he should also lower his gaze and control his sight. صاحب الصالحين. And also he should accompany righteous people. Because if he is sitting with a righteous person, he will not look at that which is haram. But if he is with a sinner, then that sinner will encourage him to look at that which is haram. ما عندك نظر أنت؟ ما تشوف الفتن ما شاء الله تبارك الله تبارك الله نعم فيفتن غيره نعم so there are some people who have problems within themselves in how they deal with the attractions or how they deal with the fitan around them and sometimes they approach a person who is not affected by these fitan and they become a cause for him being tested by these fitan هذا يقول شيخ الإسلام بن تيمية رحمه الله إنه بعض الناس في صورة إنكار المنكر هو يدعو للمنكر يعوج للمنكر كيف نعم and شيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية رحمه الله mentioned that some people with the excuse of trying to forbid evil they actually end up spreading evil and how is this يقول عندنا هنا خلف المسجد that a person will say and he will detail that here at the back of the masjid there's a place ليس يقول مكان في كل شيء. There is مجان. So they will. أعوذ بالله. So a person will mention and detail that in our town there's a particular place and everything that you desire you can find it there. أعوذ بالله. هذا يقول أعوذ جزاك الله خير. نعم. وهذا يذهب من السبب هذا في صورة إنكار المنكر هذا ليس إنكار منكر إنكار المنكر ترجع إلى ولي الأمر. إلى الشرطة صحيح أما تقول لي هذا أقول جزاك الله خير جزاك أعوذ بالله نعم and because of that person mentioning this place of evil in which everything is available thinking that he is trying to remove the evil and forbid the evil he has actually made this evil more prevalent and attracted people to it if there is a place of evil like this then how do you respond? You go to the relevant authorities, you go to the police, you go to the state, you inform them, you try to get that evil changed. As for mentioning it to every person, then per that person becomes aff affected by these places. لا تتكلم بهذا الكلام. هذا يقول الشيخ الإسلام بن تيمية أخوانا. And, and this was the advice of Sheikh Sam Taymiya rahimullah that you should not speak about these matters. يعني you should not broadcast these matters. نعم. قلنا تستطيع تتزوج أسلك ما تستطيع تأتي بهذه الأشياء ابقى في المسجد طيلة اليوم نعم so we mentioned that if there is a person who is able to get married he should get married and if there is a person who is not able to get married then take these steps to protect yourself so for example come and frequent the masjid and remain in the masjid throughout the day لا تنام إلا وأنت منهك جدا يعني قبل أن تضع رأسك تنام نعم نعم and also don't go to sleep except that you're extremely tired such that as soon as you get into bed you're going to fall asleep نعم يا مثلا يقوم يصلي ويدعو الله نعم for example قيام الليل a person prays قيام الليل and he supplicates to Allah 
أو يجري مثلا ما في إشكال يعني يمشي يجري يمشي عشرة كيلو بعدين يأتي ينام خلاص أو فور إكزامبل أو فور إكزامبل رنز أند إيفن إف هي رنز 10 كيلومترز لكن اليوم الواقع إخواننا أن الغالب هذه الأشياء اللي ذكرناها يصنع عكسها صحيح صحيح والله وبعدين يقال فتنة But the problem nowadays is that a person he intentionally does everything opposite to what we have advised. And then after this he says, look at the fitna around us. نعم. العبد إذا كان طيب الله سبحانه وتعالى يعطيه مرأة طيب الطيبات للطيبون والطيبون للطيبات كما تكونون يولى عليكم. Naam. And a person, if he's good and pure and clean within himself, then Allah will bestow upon him a wife who is similar in nature. Because Allah subhanahu wa said in the Quran, the meaning of which is that the good pure women are for the good pure men, and the good pure men are for the good pure women. Shafi'i rahimahullah yaqul. And also Allah subhanahu wa mentioned the meaning of which is that just as you are, then you will be repaid by those who are in authority over you. Al-Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah, he said, He said, أن عفان الله وإياكم أن الزنا دين لابد يسدد فالذي يقع في عرض الناس سيقع الناس في عرضه. نعم. الإمام الشافعي رحمه الله said may Allah protect me and you. He said that الزنا يعني adultery it's like a debt which has to be repaid. Meaning, if a person is going to violate the honor of other people, then this is a debt. And that debt will be repaid by other people violating his honor. Now, في النكاح يختار ذات الدين. So with regards to marriage, then a man should choose a woman who possesses uh, any religion, taqwa, that khuluq, and good manners. Naam, yakhtar, yani yanzur ila, mathala, ila ummiha, annaha, yani, andaha injab, that, yani, that walad, naam. And also, he should marry a woman, yani, who will bestow upon him offspring, and this can be done by looking at her family or her mother. La bud an yaktil al-buyut min abwaabiha. يعني ما يتصل عليها واتس اب او كذا نعم او يقابلها في الشارع او في الكوفي نعم and, and also when it comes to marriage and finding a suitable partner that this is done in the manner which is correct so he doesn't send her private whatsapp messages or meet her in the coffee shops نعم الان اركان النكاح ما هي and now with regards to the pillars of nikah what are they زوج firstly the husband, meaning the groom, وزوجه, and the wife or the bride, وولي للزوجة, and then the male guardian of the woman, the bride, and then two witnesses. بعض الناس يسألني. Some people they ask me. يقول أنا جئت لأب الزوجة. I approached the father of the woman. وخطبتها منه. And I proposed to her. وبعدين يقول لم يوافق. And then after this, the father of the girl, he did not agree. And, and my reply is that the wali, the male guardian of the woman, he has to agree because this is a rukun, this is a fundamental pillar of the nikah. But if he says that he's a non-Muslim, and he does not pray, is it only now he became a non-Muslim? Only because he did not accept your proposal. He says before I did not know. The only, the only reason why now he has all of a sudden decided that her father is a non-Muslim because he doesn't pray salah because he wants to abolish his guardianship over her. And this is how people work nowadays. ماذا ص مقال الأب كافر أقول له ماذا صنعت نعم so if he says 
the father is a non-Muslim because he doesn't pray, well, how did you react? He says, well, then I went to her brother. And I proposed, and even her brother rejected the proposal. Then I found out that he's also non-Muslim. And then what did you do? And then he said, I approached somebody walking on the street. Come over here. Become the wali of this woman and marry her off to me. And he says, look, it's permitted for you to be the wali, just marry her off to me. And he says, I give you my permission. And then he married her. And then after this, there was a divorce. And now the woman doesn't have a wali. So it isn't done in this manner, meaning any person can become a wali. Because this is the sharia. And this nikah, this nikah can only be done with the express permission of the wali. And that the aqd or the contract it is recorded he said no i don't want to record the uh, the the contract because you don't know how the system works here I know. I say you don't know the system here because if I was to register the marriage, every day she'll be threatening me that if you do something to me, half of the house, half of the wealth, it's all mine. Sahih. 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 But whoever fears Allah, Allah will make an opening for him. And nowadays, the statistics are showing us that many young people, they are reaching 34 years and they are not married. Allah Allah So anyway, we mentioned the arkan or the pillars of a nikah and this is sufficient. So, the pillars of the nikah, arkan, arkan, nikah. No. So the pillars of the nikah are the bride. Ijab. No. No. So the pillars of so with regards to the pillars of the nikah, then it's, it is firstly a proposal from the man, and then the acceptance from the woman and her wali, and then the presence of the two witnesses, and that this is something which is recorded. المهم تزوج. Then after this, a person marries. وقال لها and then after marriage, he said to his wife, prepare tea for me. And she says, no, I'm not going to prepare tea. And he says that you are disobedient. And this isn't the case. It's not the case that any refusal from a wife comes under and he disobedience, no shoes. And then he divorces her immediately. Some of the ulama mention Some of the ulama mention that a talaq divorce is like a bullet. And نعم. once you have shot the bullet, it will not return. نعم. كيف? متى نطلق? So how or when how or when should a divorce happen? Who knows the married people? Now. 
نعم هذا هو أما كاسة شاهي ما صنعت له طعام لم تغسله هذا ما هو عصيان كامل إيش بعض الناس يفهم هذا عصيان قطع صيني نعم إيش المشكلة كافيتيريا موجودة اذهب اشتري كاسة واشرب خلاص نعم so firstly when it comes to divorce we have to understand the grounds upon which a divorce should be made and this is a nushuz and there's an Islamic meaning behind the term a nushuz and it is complete disobedience complete refusal to fulfill his rights this is nushuz as for something here and some refusal over there like for example I'm not going to make that tea for you this isn't valid grounds for there to be a divorce and you're now thinking that she is completely evil and she's disobedient and she refuses to fulfill my rights if she's not making tea for you there's a coffee shop over there go buy some tea and drink it and don't make a problem in your marriage Uh, one of the married people said to me If I say to my wife Prepare something for me And she does not do so Then how should I react? I reply to my I advised him That don't argue with her And how you should react to this is have a shower, put on your best clothes, nice perfume, and leave the house for half an hour. By the time you return, everything will be prepared for you. Because she's thinking that you've gone to... Now... وبين لهم قال لي شاب فرنسي قال لا المخاصمة ما تكون في النهار في الليل آخر الليل أنا أريد أنام في الصباح عندي عمل لازم أنام مبكر العمل في أوروبا لا استطيع أتخر نصف ثانية نعم فتأتي تخاصمني في الليل ما استطيع أخرج ألبس لأن لازم أنام فأقول ماذا تصنع قال أطلقها كل ليلة عندما نتخاصم ويشتد الخصام حتى أنا أقول أنت طالق نعم a, a young brother from France he approached me and he said to me that the problem in our household is that my wife doesn't argue with me in the daytime but when it's time to sleep and I'm tired and I've got work the next day and you know in Europe you can't even be late for a second when it comes to work and I'm just about to go to sleep and put my head on the bed then this is when she begins arguing with me And so, every night, she begins to argue with me, and I divorce her. And then the next night, when the night time comes, and I'm tired, and I need to sleep, and I'm about to sleep, and she begins argumentation, I divorce her. And then I say to, her, I say to him, did you divorce? And he said, yes. How many times have you divorced her? <laughs> many, many times. Subhanallah. He said, but I am tired. I عقلي يعني لم يكن مئة بالمئة نعم قلت خلاص ارسل لي ولي أمرك أنت طفل لا تف... تصنع أن تكون زوج صحيح هين فهمت قلت ارسل لي ولي أمرك نعم. نعم. عندما قال لي أنا كذا وكذا نعم. أحسن يرسل ولي أمره أحسن نعم so the point is that you asked this uh, Sheikh asked this person so how many times have you divorced her and he says many many times I'm always divorcing every night I divorce her why because I'm not thinking straight and so it doesn't apply And the Sheikh replies, you are not mature enough to marry. So send me your male guardian and I'll speak to him. It's better for me. Why is it that the right to divorce has been play, placed in the hands of the husband? So solving... The reconciling between husband and wife when they have their problems, how is it conducted? First, firstly, not every small situation should be made out to be a problem. When you enter your house, firstly, say the dua for entering the house. Mention the name of Allah. 
يقول دائما أدخل أصنع لها مشكلة في المطبخ لا تدخل المطبخ نعم وارتاح صح ولا ما علاقتك أنت بالمطبخ صح مطبخ مكتبك أنت مكتبك هنا المسجد مطبخ لا تدخل وانتهى الموضوع يا أخي أي باب يفتح لك باب المشاكل مع الزوجة أغلق هذا الباب طالما أنه ما في شيء محرم والتغافل نصف الحياة نعم يدخل كل يوم المطبخ يتخاصم معه لماذا هذا ملح لماذا هذا تضعي كذا نعم So firstly don't make every situation into a problem So if you know that if you by you going into the kitchen you're going to end up arguing and checking and making comments don't enter into the kitchen what's the kitchen got to do with you it's not like it's your library your library is in your masjid so don't as long as there's nothing haram which is going on and as the saying goes overlooking matters this is a, a half of haya naam يعني ignoring matters is half of haya لكن وجدت مشكله وعصيان كامل من الزوجه ماذا اصنع but if there is a real problem and there is complete disobedience and complete refusal from the wife then how should i react من يقول لي من المتزوجين ماذا نصنع who amongst the married can give me an answer ها من من يجاوب متزوج نعم نعم. كل واعدها وإذا لم تتس. يا سلام. ما عصيان كامل. أول شيء يعظها. وعظ. So if there is complete refusal and complete disobedience from her. The first step is to advise her, remind her, admonish her. كيف يعيرها? And how does he admonish her? يقول اسمعي. He says, listen. أخذ الأولاد والجوازات والأوراق وأخرج. والله ما تجد شيء. حتى أوراقك وجواز كل شيء تبقي هنا في هذا البلد لاجئة مشردة. هذا الوعد. نعم. So is admonishing her. threatening her with taking all the children and taking the passports and taking all her papers such that she's going to remain in the country like a refugee is this admonishing her no this is threatening no rather when you give a wa'ad a reminder an admonishment how is it he says buy for her a gift بس مو هذا ما اعجبك الاول نعم رساله يكتب لها زوجتي الغاليه انت يعني كذا والنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم اوصاني بك واوصاك بي فاستوصي بي خيرا جزاك الله خيرا نعم so هذا وعد نعم نعم you buy a gift and you send a message with a big red heart love heart and then you write sweet words to her And you say, oh, my precious wife, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advised me to be good to you and advised you to be good to me, so fulfill your rights. Because you, because you, want, from her, because you want from her to return back to you and to be good to you and live with you in, in an appropriate manner. You don't want her to disobey you even further. So, so admonishing and correcting and rectifying The marriage, it's important. قالت خلاص أتوب إلى الله. So if she says that okay, I repent to Allah. إيش تقول لها? Then what do you say to her? ها. تقول لا. لا لا لا. تذكرت أمس ماذا قلتي؟ لازم تتعلم الدرس. لا. فإن أطعنكم فلا تبغوا عليهن سبيل. إذا قالت خلاص قل خلاص انتهينا أغلقنا الملف. لماذا؟ لأن لو تعودت منك هذا دائما تعتذر وتغلق الملف. نعم. ما تفتح لها تقول صنعتي أمس وصنعتي نعم. So if هذا الدليل عليه فإن أطعنكم فلا تبغوا عليهن سبيلا. نعم. If she is sorrowful and she says okay I repent and I'm sorry then how should you behave? Do you say to her no? It's not that easy. I need to teach you the lesson. Don't you remember yesterday you did this and this and this? No, not like this. 
It's like Allah subhanahu mentioned in the Quran that if they return to your obedience, then the Shaykh said that don't keep that file opened. Close that file because each time if she says sorry and she returns back and you say, but I need to teach that lesson. And do you remember what you did the other day? Then this is going to be a continuation of those problems. Now, إِذَا لَمْ تَرْتَدِعْ بَاقِ عِصْيَانْ كَامِلْ But if she does not react in a manner which is appropriate and she remains completely disobedient and refusing, قَالَتْ خُذَ الْهَدِيَةِ then you throw the present to her. لا يوجد عندك ذوق. لا يوجد عندك ذوق. لا يوجد لا تعرف حتى تشتري هدية جميلة خذ. So you you throw the she throws it back to you and she says to you you've got no style and no taste in buying gifts. تقول لا أحلى ذوق ذوقي أنا اخترت واحدة مثلك. نعم. هذا حرب باردة. نعم. Anyway, so he replies and he says, look, my taste is good because I chose you. Now, now. Asyan kamil, ma tabat. Anyway, if she doesn't return and it's complete refusal and complete disobedience. Ma da nasna. So how should we behave? Huh? Mutzawujin. Yaqool, al-marhal al-thani al-an ba'd al-wa'ad we say that the next step after trying to admonish her is to be distanced from her. And how does he be distanced from her? And that is for three days he refuses to speak to her and then after three days he greets her. يعطيها ظهره في نفس السرير لكن يعطيها ظهره نعم يعني ما ينام في الصالة لا and also in terms of sleeping he also and he stays away from her and this means that he can sleep in the same bed but gives her his bag so he doesn't need to go and sleep on the couch in a different room تمام تابت قال تبت now if she's sorrowful and regretful and she repents خلاص يتوقف يغلق الملف again the file is closed but if she carries on with her disobedience and a complete refusal, then how does he behave? Some people think that Islam, it calls to beating the women and leaving marks on them, and Islam is free from this. The, the Prophet ﷺ, he never hit a slave or a servant, never mind a woman. It's not possible. It's not possible that the religion of Islam contains an encouragement to beat or hurt women and leave marks upon them. And here is in front of you the seerah of the Prophet and the lives of the Sahaba. And then after this stage, that he does not hit a woman and leave marks on her. بعد هذا ماذا يصنع؟ so after this what does the person do؟ ما أعرفه يأتي برجل من أهله من أقرباء الزوج ورجل ليس مرأة من أقرباء الزوجة ما يأتي بمرأة المرأة ما تصلح بل عندنا في المذهب أنه يخ في المذهب في زاد المستقنع يقول المؤلف رحمه الله ينبغي أن يختار ذات دين وخلق كذا بلا أم نعم مكتوبها كذا عندنا نعم فلا يأتي إلى مرأة يأتي برجل ورجل من هذا من أقرباء وهذا من أقربائها نعم okay the next step of reconciling a problem between the husband and the wife what is it is that a a male from her family and a man also from his family, both of them are chosen. 
نعم هذا الرجل يشترط فيه مع هذا الرجل أنه يريد الإصلاح ويعرف الأمور يعني لا تأتي بإنسان أحمق مستعجل يريد تطلقها حتى تزوجها نعم And also these two people who are going to come forward and try to reconcile between them they intention should be to find out the root of the problem and try to solve the problem and bring them together so you don't choose a person who's not very intelligent and he's going to cause further problems and he wants to her to be divorced يعرف الامور يعني تقول مثلا لا يصلي يقول لا اما تصلي او فراق يشرب خمر يشرب خمر. نقول لا ما يمكن تبقي معه مفهوم and نعم. also a person who is intelligent enough that he understands the situation so for example if his wife does not pray he says no she has to pray or if the man he's drinking alcohol or smoking or taking intoxicants then he says no this is valid enough for a divorce لكن لو قالت ما اشترى لي فستان ما اشترى لي لباس هذا يقول انا اشتري وتصالح الان وخلاص نعم. هذا ما يمكن يفرق من اجل لم يشتري لها كذا نعم. But if her complaint is that my husband, my husband hasn't bought me for me a particular garment then these intelligent people they try to solve the issue they say okay i'll buy you a piece of garment and just keep together stay together to solve your problem اذا انتهى الموضوع انتهى and when the issues are resolved then the file, the file is closed ماذا نصنع الان after this what do we do الخامس الطلاق آخر خطوة نعم and if after all of these steps that a person takes and there are still problems and there's a refusal and there's a disobedience and the rights are not being fulfilled then the fifth and final step is divorce كيف يطلقها and how does he divorce يقول أنت طالق مليون مليون المليون مرة نعم Is it that a person says to his wife that I divorce you a million, million times? Yes, sir. Is it correct? لا. لابد يطلقها في طهر لم يجامعها فيه. Firstly, he's only allowed to say the divorce in a, in a state of her purity in which they have not, they have not had relations. ولا يخرجها من البيت. And he is not permitted to exile her or exit her from the house. وينفق عليها. And he and he is still responsible for maintaining her. ويبقى هو في البيت. يعني هو حتى هو لا يخرج من البيت. And he or. نعم ما يخرج من البيت هو ولا هي. أنا أضحك لأن ابني هذا زيد كان خلف نعم. ها ما شاء الله نعم. تمام هو يسجل الآن. نعم هذا يسجل عليك والكاميرا تسجل عليها أنا. نعم. Um, and also the husband he should also remain in the house as well so he maintains her and does, he does not throw her out of the house and neither does he himself also abandon the house shaytan <laughs> And shaytan, and there are many different shayateen, the whole focus of the shaytan and the one who is most beloved to the shaytan is that person who tries to separate between husband and wife and separate between people. Yes. Wallahu a'lam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Jazakum Allahu khayra.